everybody. These are a new series that I've been working on. These were done, they're very complicated and they're kind of hard to explain, but try to track with me. And um, they were done at the end of a serious creative dry spell for me. I've been working on the landscape series for quite some time and just hitting wall after wall with it because it wasn't, wasn't where my heart was at at the time. So I think you can see the release in these pieces. A cherished art teacher of mine from my recent past saw that I really love to work with the human body, um, muscular structure, skeletal structure, and I have a pretty intensive dance background, not, not you know, as a professional or anything, but enough that it made a real impression on me and the way I think about and see movement. And you can really see that in these, but I was more, my work in the past, for anyone who's, who's followed that, I'll, I'll walk through those at some point, but was much more of a literal nude, um, separating pretty literal muscle groups in a very spelled out way. And these are significantly more subtle. They're more gestural um, and uh, often clothed even, like with some drapery. And they're very emotive. Um, these pieces are, they're strangely celebratory and mournful at the same time. These have a very um, consistent undercurrent, with, besides the one in, in the middle here, it's just strictly more energetic and celebratory in nature. The two large ones on my left and right are more um, the sentiment of loss and the fear of not being remembered. Um, so let's walk through the details of some of these and see what you think. So this one, the title is yet to be determined, but it was a really fun experiment in looking for the negative space and deciding based on the sort of very emotive frame of mind that I was working from, what objects fit into that space. So it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle of a painting. I started with uh, this skull, I believe, and it gave me this, you know, wrap around kind of a space. And then I did this skull. So I had a, uh, well, let me back up. The initial process on these was laying down these pieces of loose canvas and putting down acrylic paint. I've always had kind of a penchant for working with color and so in this case I wanted it to be more subdued and I knew it would be glazing over the top of it but I wanted it to have that sort of rich um, spectrum like color undertone. So I put the, the blue and blues and the purple so they could meld into these uh, reds and into these greens and blues down here without ever uh, muddying too much more than I wanted them to anyway. And then I just I laid down these globs of paint and then blended with my body. So for me, the process of laying down these backgrounds is a lot about getting my hands onto the canvas and into the paint. And there's a certain, certain release in that because you know, as an adult, you never you just make a mess. And this is a way that I get to do that on a regular basis. And it gets my, my head into a much looser, much less perfectionistic, restrained frame of mind for the the gestures on the top. Um, so after that, then there was a, a little bit of this white glaze that you see underneath that gives it this sort of like hazy, sleepy, hollow kind of spectral feel. Uh, I was super happy with how that came out, specifically in these little sections where you see more of the, the sky type look. Um, and then I did the tree, and I didn't really anticipate it coming out this way. I was working very much from like my subconscious, which means for me, like I'll specifically curate an environment. I'll sort of clear my evening or my day and work uh, to eliminate any distractions, put my phone on silent. <laughs> For those of you who know me, my phone's on silent all the day. But um, play music or a background film uh, that gets me into a certain headspace. Uh, like the the style and the motif of like a Wuthering Heights or a Dracula would have weighed a lot into this sort of Victorian, hopefully fresh, yet mournful aesthetic. Um, and in the process of getting into that making art from the subconscious, I wonder if that played into this, um, this gap in the tree. To me, it rather looks like a Georgia O'Keeffe reference to female anatomy, which I thought would be an interesting juxtaposition here. And it's sort of a, a journey of what would appear to me to be a grieving female. Um, just, she's sitting up in the crook of this tree, 
just because this the tree that I drew wrapping around these skulls lent itself to framing her in this space. Um, and you got a dripping crescent moon here, and um, a tree that could very well be either blooming or dying, and you don't really know which. And uh, then we got the candelabra um, at the base of the skull, and this really interesting, possibly my favorite part of the piece, uh, a very strong uh, sort of faceless male form grasping the shoulder of this very gentle, willowy looking female form that's facing away into this sort of flock of birds. To me, it had the effect of someone not necessarily benign, but maybe, you know, maybe a, a sort of a, a forceful or possessive figure clinging to this woman who is trying to grieve or trying to connect with herself. And there's this, um, the, the pathway through a graveyard and a, a similar female figure kind of gazing off into the space after the graveyard. So this whole tone was very much a dealing with mourning, dealing with loss, but in a yeah, almost visually celebratory way. So I'm a huge fan of this piece. I have, it's to me, it's a, it's a sonata that kind of moves through my process when I'm doing really, really well. Um, so if you have any thoughts on naming, be my guest. I would love to know what you see in this piece. Feedback is always welcome and altogether too rare. So if you take the time to watch this video, for sure take the time to tell me how this piece resonates with you. This piece is the happiest of the three. This piece is more about balance than it is anything else. We started with um, this color canvas the same way we did the others. I was um, rubbing a mixture of wet on wet and wet on dry. You can kind of see in here blue through the teal tones into these warm yellows and oranges, reds, and purples on the other side. Uh, I really I have some sort of recurring connection to the spectrum that's pretty pretty apparent in my work. Um, it's also, these pieces are also so nice because instead of just putting paint on paint, I actually, as you can see here and in this other piece as well, um, started using pen and marker in conjunction with kind of a watercolor treatment of the black and the white paint to get this sort of mixed media feel. Um, and I, I have been drawing much longer than I've been painting, so I, arguably I think that the, uh, the forms are stronger than when I just paint. Um, so we started with the yin and the yang, and um, some of these other shapes came after that, the echoing of those. Um, and then I started layering in these forms that kind of fit around the shapes and fit into each other. My favorite part of this piece is the male form that's inside the female thighs, the female back arching and the legs coming down here, and the overlap here of him for perfectly fitting inside this closed space she's created. Um, I was really, really pleased with that. There's also a great overlap right here where the, the, the male form is wrapping around the yin and the yang and sort of holding onto it here. And his foot um, comes down right here, which looks deceptively like um, the second foot to this pair, but it's actually not. It's connected to this male form and this connects to a female form, which to me is like the the balance of a good of a good um, relationship of any kind. Sort of your you bleed into one another and fill out the, the parts of the other person and complement in such a way that the the barrier can become not codependent but invisible between you two. So this is all very much. Balance Center, which is actually the name of the piece. This piece was focused on um, creating a sort of abundant but balanced celebratory uh, vision of these these free forms. And this piece is arguably my favorite. It's so restrained for me to not use any color at all, but it forced me to express myself in other ways, which was such a good challenge. Um, this is not the vision I had for this piece at all. It was a total, total departure. It came alive once I had the canvas done. The first thing I laid down was this couple right here, which to me is the linchpin of the whole piece. It's kind of where your eye goes. Um, and that sentiment is not at all what I had planned when I laid down this background, which was just, you know, the sheet of white canvas, and then I laid down two black vertical columns, thinking, 
What I would do is create black outline forms in the white spaces bleeding into white outline forms in the black spaces and call it different strokes, referencing that we're pretty much all the same, but it's, it's sort of a matter of perspective, our differences. So that's not what happened, <laughs> needless to say, so I'm going to have to try to make that piece again. But in this case, it became about the same as the, the first piece that I showed you. It's a little bit of a reference to, to grief and to loss, because you've got all these forms that look like there's, there's tension between uh, the male and the female form, which, you know, to me, I think this is a good time to visit this, the male and the female form aren't just face value, a male and a female form, or representing a romantic relationship. I think it does, definitely, but it also represents the, the, the yin and the yang inside of one person. Inner conflict that we experience, and every other kind of relationship has that sort of we swim in and out of being being unified and being at peace and just enjoying contentment and experiencing uh, conflict or experiencing grief, separation, loss. Um, and I think that the male and the female form and the push and the pull between those is a great canvas for expressing some of those more complex sentiments. So these two uh, started it and it kind of took off from there and it was just not at all what I expected after that. Um, Chronologically, I really don't remember how it developed after that, but we now have all of these sort of Victorian timepiece items filling up this piece. So it has a very Edgar Allan Poe kind of uh, vintage Gothica feel going on. You've got a grandfather clock, you have books, sort of scroll in the corner, this cameo silhouette piece, a uh, closed what do you call those things? Close of all pocket watch, I suppose. Um, a letter with a plume, um, and the scales of justice here, and this raven, um, and the piano and the candelabra. So these forms um, all appear to be in some amount of sadness or discomfort to me, which was not something that I planned. I was very much in a happy frame of mind uh, doing this piece, ironically enough, but I. Um, when I look at it, I see that considering struggle and loss was definitely coming out of me here. It's just that I added some text, um, never let me go and remember me when I'm gone in the, in the black columns. And I couldn't bring myself to develop it any further than that. It was the initial plan, as I said, was to put white forms in these black columns. But I really appreciate the, the breathable space between these three um, columns of representation. Again, unnamed, I, I don't quite know how to encapsulate all that is contained in either of these two larger pieces, so suggestions welcome.